everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, today we thought we would give you a walkthrough of our studio. I do apologise in advance for my croaky voice and a little bit nasally. I am a little bit under the weather, as we say in Australia, um, but we still hope that you can look past that and you enjoy this walkthrough of our home. So we're just going to take you a quick run through of my studio now. This started to come, come about due to a comment from last night and the comment was basically it's alright for you, you have this massive studio, you have a million dollars worth of lighting equipment and you have a professional model, of course you're going to take great photos. Well my answer to that is I started off in a boot of a car for two years, then moved to a tiny little crappy studio for five years, worked seven days a week, then I came here about 13, 14 years ago, I actually built this whole studio, my, like the interior of the studio. I spent two months building this and I worked seven days a week for pretty much 20 odd years to get my business to the size it is now. Um, I had to be able to take good photos during that whole period of time, even with crappy studios and shitty lights and shitty cameras. So it doesn't work like that. You need to have the ability to take photos first then the gear makes it more fun for us and the toys are for photographers they're not for friggin great photos they're more toys make us feel good so and the thing with the model side of things bex on the other side of the camera yes hello and she will tell you straight can you get a good picture out of a bad photographer no not at all right so and this every model will tell you it's they need the photographer to talk to them, make them feel certain ways, to make them then project that look. And that's what makes a great photo. If a photographer can't relate to the model properly, it doesn't matter if the model's an absolute beginner or someone like Beck who's been doing it a long time. They really only get great pictures when they're working with a photographer that works with them. But that's why I stopped modeling is because I was sick of getting bad photos back. But anyways. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry for all the photographers that used to shoot back. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I'm just going to kick this door shut. Cool. So what I'm going to do is take you through my studio. Now, uh, from the outside, we, just so you all know, and we're not going to get broken into tomorrow, we have three security cameras outside, which are on 24-7. Um, they go to back to base, and we can view them at any time. So as, as soon as we think something's wrong, they go off. We have monitored security, of course. We've got the two buildings around us are 24 hours a day, which makes it really comfortable for me because less chance people are going to come in. We do not run cameras inside because that would just be creepy. <laughs> Beck, would you like to work in a studio that had cameras in there? No, right, so just be straight out and creepy. We have safes and we have floor safes where our camera gear, nobody can get that floor safe out and then we're not even going to show you where it even is. We also have some dive bombs set up in here and smokers. So if anyone did get in here, they're going to get covered in shit. <laughs> cool, I'll get away from the security stuff. So basically the studio is an open plan studio. So our whole idea of it is I've got this big open space so we can actually build a bedroom there or a kitchen there. We can build a lounge room. We can build anything anywhere and we can use natural light just as if we're in a real house. So commercially, a lot of my early work was doing things like Sheridan sheets and furniture companies and would build mock rooms. The other part of my life was doing stuff for cars and motorbikes and things like that, but I'll go into that a little bit later. So if we start over here, we have I have these two amazing, these are incredible orange gel lights. <laughs> Sorry for the person, I'm really not having a go at you. But if you ever see these in my pictures, these are just heaters. We're like five degrees Celsius in Melbourne at the moment and it's freezing cold. This place is too expensive to heat the whole place. So we micro heat areas with things like this. Everything in here is on wheels so we can work everywhere. I have this amazing light which I can adjust by dropping things to block the top windows. We can wheel that, wind down things, we can open and shut all the curtains around. And I do a lot of work with some backgrounds there and just shooting with the light behind me. So in fact I would say maybe one third of my commercial work is that incredibly cheap light out through that window. Next thing we've got obviously these windows here my very well kept paper drop downs 
Like, look at the bend in them, look at the tears. I don't like anything neat, so they're up there on purpose. When they roll out, they're rippled, they're crunched, they're dirty. That's my look, that's why they're there. We do have some clean rolls that we keep in the tubes. We hardly ever use them, though most of my clients will book me for my look, which is a little bit more grungy and dirty. Um, just things that used to be a big thing years ago, but not anymore. We used to have, in fact, we have a magazine collection that used to be up to date. We used to spend over $300 a month on magazines to have the latest and greatest magazine. I don't think I've bought a magazine now in five years. So it just shows you the state of the industry. So we've got to actually start getting rid of things like that. Um, the scrim, which I use a lot, so I'll use it on that to lower the light so I can move my light up and down by using this scrim. I think we've got tutorials showing me doing that. We use these side mirror windows a lot. Um, coming down here, we've got our, now someone called them, what, um, I can't remember the name, can you remember what they said, called them? Um, I don't know, I just remember Mechanically, them. Mechanically, like they thought these should have been in a, a uh, oh, like a car lift, car or lifts or something like that. Yeah. These are very, very common in studios. So, and again, this is not putting you down. If you've never been in a big hire studio or a big commercial studio, we use these for things. So, it's so easy for us to get our height, whatever we, whatever we want. We can run them in and out, right? We can spin them around. They're so easy. We cannot knock these things over. So if we have tether cables and someone trips on, they're never gonna pull one of these over. Just the cable will come out. And the stay. cable will come out. Yeah. These are nice rock solid. We, they're just, they're big and heavy for a reason. And the heavier they are, the bigger they are, the better they are for me. So this is the one that's used a lot for video. This is my normal one. And again, simple, it just, I can lift and lower to whatever height I can want. I can wind in, out. I can throw a camera on this one. I now have adjustments so I can drop the camera anywhere I like. And this whole fitting will mount on the bottom and I can set it down low. We can lock our wheels or not lock them. It's just something that's used a lot in commercial studios. Um, this is, I'll, tripods are a pain. I used to hate them, but more and more I like them because even when I'm freestyling, this thing is amazing for freestyling. Because a lot of the time, I want to lock in my crop because I tend to crop in camera, I don't crop afterwards. So once I want something like this, I can just concentrate on the model's expression and I don't have to worry about re-holding that crop every time. And with this, it makes it really easy for me to quickly move and work with a model freehand. So I love things like this. I, I do do freestyle, uh, fashion running around shots, but when it comes to anything that's more portraiture or beauty, I love to jump back on something so I can just concentrate on the model and not have to worry about making sure my camera's square and perfectly cropped. Um, this is going to be all over the place because I'm just going to talk about as we walk past things. Um, this is a rack of my favourite clothes. So most photographers have a hang up that, oh, someone's already shot you in that, we can never shoot in that again. I'm the opposite. I have some of my favourite clothes to work with models and they're normally things that are very plain, dirty, grotty. I want the model to shine. So if I put them into fancy stuff, the fancy stuff takes over the model. I much prefer just to use my grungy stuff. And this is for both test shoots, which every photographer should always do them. Every model in the world should always test. It's a way of getting stuff in your folio with your look. I don't post my commercial work because I hate it. It is not my look. It's what some art director has told me to do. It's not what I would do. I'm quite often sitting there going, angel wings, yeah, right, this is horrible. So when I do test shoots with models, and it could be after a commercial shoot, it could be a model that contacted me or a model I've contacted, it's so I can build my folio to attract clients to book me for my style. Um, the second rack is just left over from a commercial shoot. So that was a commercial shoot that we've done, and then we've got a rack for when clients come in. So this was all painted um, three days worth of painting, basically in greys and whites, and we just did different splashing and splotching. I think every studio should have their own look wall. So this is my studio's look wall. We have some big mega booms, which cost a fortune, but again, it just gives me the ease of working quickly. I can very quickly adjust lights very, very quickly to how I want. I don't have to climb up things to adjust. They are very expensive. 
but it saves my time on a shoot, which means my clients are wrapped because I can get stuff done quickly. Um, makeup area, so predominantly this is the makeup section. All of these are on wheels, so we can actually move them over to where we're shooting if we need. This is our hair section. Um, all of them have got lights around them. There's wigs and all of crap into those boxes. Our kitchen area, now the kitchen area is for us. We don't really do food. We get the odd food shoot, but we, if we're gonna do something food, we'll tend to go to a restaurant or something and do it, not do it in here. Uh, these cupboards up here, um, they're full of model food. That means stuff that's heaps of sugar that they can eat with lipstick on. <laughs> And sorry about turtles, yes, we do have straws because let's lipstick and drinks, but we make sure these go in the rubbish bin so they should never go to the ocean. <laughs> and one day we'll get some other straws. In here is our wardrobe. So in here is just a collection of stuff that's been collected over 20 years. So we've just got rack upon rack of clothing. One, two, three, four, five racks. We've got shoes the whole way up here. We've got you know, stuff in here. Look, we opened up, this is one of the props drawers. Yeah. Some nice sort of nasty stuff. Some fake, got fake bullets in there. Plastic bullets. <laughs> so heaps of crap, and I know it's all weird crap. It's amazing how often we'll pull something out of here for a client shoot. This comes in handy to have it. What, the bullets? <laughs> oh, just all of the random stuff. The random stuff. Um, this is our podcasting bench and our live streaming bench. And both Beck and I hate live streams because no matter how hard we try, the internet stuffs us up and puts stuff out of sync and we have problems. But we're persisting with this and one day we'll be happy. <laughs> um, you'll notice it's on wheels. Everything on in here is all on wheels because we just want to be able to wheel stuff around. This is just my Hasselblad kit. This is pretty much what I travel with. That's what I check in with as check-in luggage. Um, it's a thing we call Think Tank. They're great and they're crap. So I love them to bits, but my last trip the handle broke, so I had to literally put this on my backpack for six weeks and I hated that. But to me, it's really good. It looks small and inconspicuous. Whereas a Pelican case looks heavy, so I very rarely ever get picked up on this. It's nearly 29 kilos of hand luggage. So that's just my Hass kit. As we come over here, again, everything on wheels. So this is, uh, we've got some fans on here. We've got some wrong color accessories on here. Some Fresnels on here. This rack is pretty much my wrong color rack that we use a lot. So I've got a couple of Scoro packs and some graffiti packs. All my heads on here again. So we can just wheel it through the area we're working. Everything's really quick. Over here is my pro photo rack. Uh, just so we don't get confused. It's more for people if they help me, it's really easy. That all the pro photo gear sits on one rack. Um, and it's really handy. A lot of this gear, it's the pro photo. I don't have to pull big packs out just to do a single light shoot. So I use this a fair bit these days. Into here, I've got my compensator. Well, I've got my two compensators in here. There's this compensator and that compensator up there. I'll talk about this one first. So originally, I contacted the rep from Broncolor and I wanted to buy the 1.7 metre para. He said, oh, we've got a 3.3. And I said, no, I only want a 1.7. He said, we'll sell you the 3.3 for $1,000 cheaper than the 1.7 because you're the only studio in Australia that has the headroom and the room to use this. And once you use it, you'll never want the 1.7 again. They're right. I'm really happy they did that. They sold me a $23,000 light for about $6,000. So it was a bonus. With this, the bigger the light is, the more I can tune the light. So the smaller it is, the less I can move it. The bigger the light is, the more I can tune it. I use this predominantly commercial. I hardly ever use it on one of my shots, um, but it is used a lot on commercial high key and stuff like that. This light up here, if Beck can see up there, we've got four packs up on the roof. Let me tilt this gimbal up, there we go. Can you see that? Yeah, so it's four packs on the roof. 
Um, this is two point, I think it's 2.8 metres by 6.2 metres long softbox. There is eight heads in it. Um, that is the remote control to operate it. Um, so with this, it allows me to move this anywhere. I can, I can pretty much load this to the ground dead flat. I can drop it up that way. I can twist it any way at all except upside down. And I have this multi-buttoned controller, but it just, you can just see that what I can do is I can move this along, you'll see it track. And I can track this back and forward and I can track it right through the studio. So I can pretty much set this up anywhere in the studio and fire. Ah. You broke it. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so I can adjust each individual light. I used to use this a lot shooting motorbikes and furniture and a little bit with cars. I don't do much at work anymore, so it doesn't get used anywhere near as what it used to get used. It paid for itself 10 times over back when I was doing that. I could set up a motorbike shoot in 10 minutes. And that was a shot that hardly needed to be retouched. So it was worth its weight in gold when I put it up there, but we just don't get to use it much anymore. Um, into here, just all our racks again, on wheel, all our stands on wheels. Um, this is just our charging station. It looks an absolute mess, but pretty much any battery this side of the station mean, means it needs to be charged. Any battery this side of the station means it's been charged. Um, and it's also a portable makeup bench. Um, while I'm here, I should go through. We are running a Sonus sound system throughout this place. Um, we used to run big PA amps and they're still all sitting up there, but it was very echoey. So at the moment now we run three Sonus subwoofers and we run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve satellites and three subwoofers. We can now get a really nice music throughout the whole place that doesn't echo and doesn't sound like you're in a hall. So we can get some really nice music and we can localise it to the mo where the models are working. The only thing is I'm not a massive fan of Sonus because their actual system drops out all the time and it drives us up the wall. Anyway, that's it. Um, I have a HMI light handy for whenever we lose a bit of sunlight and we need to quickly kick something up and I'm not using flash. Um, fans for summer as well as for shoots. We've already done a tutorial on all our walls. So that's how much room they take up. They're all stacked up there. So they really take up no room. I think we've got 10 walls in there. Um, Computer table, which we skipped. I'll get Beck to come around. Computer table, again, on wheels. So I can just wheel it around to any area we're working. Our tether cables run off this. We're running a Apple rubbish bin down there and a couple of ISO screens up here. Um, they're color balanced, but we do all our fine in work back in my office, which are much more, they're the newer version of these screens. Um, into this back area, although we should go to the mess. Let's go to the mess. So upstairs, we have in here, we have an office, but I hate offices. So it's actually full of client stuff they've dropped off to be photographed and soft boxes. That's all that's in here. Up here is a mess. It's an absolute mess because we've been too, too busy to sort this out, but my Book library is all sitting up on here, as well as in here. So there's some of my favourite books, you know, Patrick G. Michel here, Peter Lindbergh, uh, Helmut Newton. There's all different stuff. So, great Renaissance painters. They're just stuff that I use to work with clients to get um, mood. So if I quickly need to grab something, I can grab a book and go down to the client. Empty boxes, crap. <laughs> this area here is just all shit. We come in here, this looks even worse, but God. this is a bit of our prop it. stuff. So you're not gonna know what you're gonna find anywhere in here, like the soccer ball there, there's an old, broken, an old <laughs> clock here, We've got some golf clubs, We've got another stand, uh, mannequins. There's boxes and boxes of kitchen utensils. They're all props for shoots. They're, all this stuff up here is either being used on a shoot isn't there or, a wheelchair somewhere? Yeah, there is a wheelchair. <laughs> there it is. 
Um, all the stuff in here has either been used on a shoot and there's even a saddle, or I found it and thought one day I could use, do a shoot with it, but haven't. So it, it's a area that when we come up here, we create something amazing, but we don't come up here very often. And Beck's recent shot was on the chair there. But yeah, this is just our mess area up here. Every place has to have a messy area. So now into the back room. And, um, we have fans here. We've got all our uh, white. So we've got our phones, which are white and black. And that thing there is 12 years old. So it's not bad, Nick, for 12 years. This one here is about four years old. So with the V flats, they're just 50 mil wide. We paint one side black, one, and we'll leave one side white. And then on the other side, we just walk in them with gaff tape. So, and I find them the best. I hate having stands. So stands for foam, you always trip over them. Um, this is a mess, but it's not. It's an organized it's mess. It's an organized mess. So, um, boxes of gear, that's predominantly my film section. So yes, I do shoot film. There's a 503, there's a Mamiya in there. There's my film backs for my Hasselblad, uh, Polaroid backs for lots of different cameras. And we even have film. So yes, I do shoot film and I love film, but commercially it's just not viable. Um, just crap, like we see sunscreen. We use this as a shimmer on skin. So it's aerosol sunscreen, the banana boat makes a great shimmer on skin. We use it a fair bit for that. Um, just different lenses and that, they're sitting there that don't get used a lot, but I need them to be handy. Lots of gimbals and that just, it's just like pens and textures and up there's all our batteries, the memory cards, it's all stuff. There's our fire safe for all our hard drives. There's a whole batch of hard drives that need to be put in there. Camera bags and things like that. At the moment we're working out uh, what we're taking to the States. So we're just repacking and organizing out of all our bags what we need to take, what cables we need to take. Um, so this takes me about an hour to two hours before a trip to work out all the stuff we want. So up here is all materials. So they're backdrops, they're drops, they're all different materials that we use within shoots. Soft boxes and things sitting up top there, more are sitting up in the other room. Um, from here on, this area here is our maintenance and building area. So quite often we will build those walls or repaint them or rebuild them for a sh commercial shoot. So we have, you know, we've got a drop saw sitting here. We've got a compressor down there. We've got heaps of electrical tools, all our tools, paint, sanders, everything. Uh, bits of timber and crap, like the skirting boards. They're just portable skirting boards that we can stick on for a shoot. Um, yeah, they're all of the floors that we use for commercial shoots and just crap. It just looks like crap, but it gets used a lot. Anything that doesn't get used, in two years, I tend to throw out. I didn't used to, but I do now. So yeah, this is pretty much my working space. And yeah, look, I know there's guys out there that wish they had it. Yeah, look, I, 13 years ago before I moved in here, I could never believe I'd have a place like this. It just, it's hard work, it's determination. It's putting your fingers in your ears and not listening to anybody else and shooting what you shoot and let the world see what you shoot and not listen to camera clubs Photograph, other photographers, anybody who are not going to be your clients. A lot of the stuff I do commercial is still colour. There's still all the stuff I'm not a big fan on, but my clients love the way that I work with models. That's number one why they book me, to get the expressions I get. And my comfortability of working in a studio very quickly. So ex extremely quickly I can get a shoot done and they'll say, shit, we had another photographer last year do this and it took two days and you've done it in half a day. And that's just what I do. I know my studio really well, I know my lighting and I communicate with models and that's why I get so busy and that's why I get booked. To finish it off, yeah, gear is for me. All these toys are for me. But I can take a great photo just with a Sony, put a lens on it and some natural light 
and they don't have to be a model. All I, I just need a bit of time to talk to the person to make them the type of look that I want and I can create a great picture out of anybody just with that gear. So don't get gear hung up. It is good when we have the gear, I can work quickly. But if I didn't have this gear, I could still take photos. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please leave comments below. We try and answer every comment. Um, happy to have discussions with people, but don't get nasty on me because you're jealous or something because Beck doesn't like it. <laughs> Beck gets angry and bites my head off. <laughs> oh, and by the me. way, Beck made me oh, I, wear oh. her again. Oh, so she gosh. said every time we do a live stream, I have to be wearing her. Throw me under the bus. I did, <laughs> really well. Um, anybody in America or Canada will be over in about four or five days. We'll try and do a couple of uh, streams from America. Um, and please, if you've got any suggestions what you'd like to see us do, they've got to be quick. We can't go in-depth. We do all that in-depth stuff on our tutorial site. I will just, Beck's getting all upset because she hasn't had her face on the camera no, for about five not. minutes. No, so I'm, I'm just going to come back and then let Beck finish it because it'll make her, ha make her happier. <laughs> well, I'm See nasally. how sick she looks? That's really <laughs> ugly light too. Oh, is it? Yeah, no, it's good. I like oh, ugly light. Look at me. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the studio. That's and nice. And I think that Peter kind of covered everything, so I don't really have much to add, um, aside from we will hopefully see you guys in America and catch you next time on YouTube. Bye. Stop it. How do I? Peter. <laughs>